Joining us now, Mark Mitchell, head pollster, Rasmussen. Mark, thanks for being with us today. I know this is a little bit short notice. I got your polls, your polling yesterday. I almost fell off my chair because after the Wisconsin complete RNC debacle, we needed some good news and you gave it to us. So we're excited about it. First, though, I'm going to go to um, what is this guy? I think this is cut two. Here's Eric Trump yesterday saying the Dems will do anything to win. Cut to Trump. A guy who has been absolutely lambasted by fake scandal after fake scandal after fake scandal that has been disproven for a perfectly legal $130,000 payment. It doesn't make any sense when people are getting murdered in the street, when people are getting shot on Fifth Avenue. It makes no sense at all. Alvin Bragg should be ashamed of himself. Letitia James should be ashamed of himself and all of these people. We have to stop the games. We have to stop the nonsense. We have to let the democratic process prevail. But unfortunately, the Democrats don't care. They will lie, cheat, and steal to win. We saw it in 2020. We're seeing it right now. They will do anything that they can to take out a political rival of theirs. And um, we're going to fight it. And as we always do, Eric, we're, we're going to win. We won Russia. We won the impeachments. We won the Ukraine hoax. We won, you know, the Kavanaugh battle. We, we've won so many freaking battles at this point, and we're going to win this one. You better believe it. Okay, Mark Mitchell, head pollster Rasmussen. You had some shocking poll numbers out yesterday after the indictment. Can you walk us through those, Mark? Absolutely. I'd love to be talking about them again because I think they're a huge I told you so. And we predicted, as I'm sure a lot of people did, that this would blow up in Democrats' faces. And these numbers, I, I, I mean, they could not be clear that that is exactly what happened. So Rasmussen, we've been tracking daily presidential approval for a long time. It's a great tracking tool, but it's not the best for somebody like Biden because his supporters just trust him. They listen to what they're told on the news and there's not a lot of sensitivity to that number and the things that happen around us, at least not since the Afghanistan crisis and really the early 2022. Since then, Biden approval has just been kind of bouncing around in the high 40s. But we ask another tracking question that is a lot more effective at really understanding the dynamics of what's going on in this country. And that's the Biden-Trump hypothetical rematch in 2024. So we started asking that question the month that we left all that stuff in Afghanistan and those Marines got killed when it was just an absolute crisis. And with the same weighting that we used for the 2020 presidential cycle, we showed that Biden would lose to Trump by 13 points in a rematch. And that was just incredible news at the time. That represents a 14 point swing in our polling. So we've asked that question a couple of times since then. And the lead has always been stunning and large, but less so. For 2022, Trump would win against Biden by a comfortable six points and just kept that lead. And it was 46 to 40. But then coming into this year, it was a pretty t tough time for the Trump campaign. Um, I think people somewhat blamed him for the underperformance in November. And also, I think that his supporters really hit a lot of question marks about his supporter, Kevin McCarthy. And we came out in February with numbers that showed that Biden would beat Trump by 45 to 42. Now, since then, Trump has had an incredible uh, run of just really great news and headlines. He's had good turnout at campaign events. He had a great trip to Ohio. And then this indictment happened. And so these numbers, the most recent time we asked this set of questions, um, were two of the days, two of the three days we ran the poll were actually after the news came down that the Manhattan DA was going to move ahead with the indictment. And sure enough, now Trump beats Biden 47 percent to 40 percent. And that's actually the largest lead that Trump's had over Biden since November of 2021. And the highest percentage of the vote, 47 percent, that he's had since September of 2021. So an incredible turnaround. And as people may know, if you follow polling, we have really detailed reports that go into how all the different demographics responded. And I can compare them um, from how, say, demographics came out in February versus how they came out today and look at the change and, and what groups of people changed most since then. And two of the 
top five biggest change drivers of demographics were Democrats and liberals. So a lot of people, this this indictment woke them up. It was not a good thing for the Democrat camp. Now, will that hold up? I don't know. We'll have to see. So what about the swing what? states? Because with a seven-point lead nationally, because, you know, I mean, part of your polling is people in California, Massachusetts, New York, et cetera, Oregon and Washington, right? None of those are ever, ever go for uh, Trump. He'll get beat two to one there like he always does. So when you have you have you looked at the swing states? We did some swing state polling coming up into 2022, and it was actually a little bit all over the board. Um, one of the things that I, I saw is that in the swing states, Trump was doing very well, better than the candidates, the Republican candidates that were running. Um, but most recently, we just went into a poll to give you an idea of some of the challenges we're having. Recently, about, I think it was less than a month ago, we went into Arizona to ask for a client sponsor a bunch of questions related to election integrity. And in that poll, we found that Arizona voters told us that they voted for Carrie Lake over Katie Hobbs by eight points. And as we know, the official reported results in Arizona were within 20,000 votes or less than, you know, it was less than a half a percent. So that's an eight point disparity. And you say, wow, Rasmussen polls are off eight points. Well, no, because we also did um, Blake Masters and Mark Kelly and got the exact reported results. So there are things going on in these swing states more so than there used to be that make it very challenging to be a pollster, let's just say. Um, and we'll have to see what it looks like this presidential cycle. Uh, I'm going to need to do a lot more polling, I think. Well, you guys have been very accurate. Uh, no question about it. And um, Mark, Mark Mitchell with us, Rasmussen. Look at this polling swing. Trump with a seven-point lead. I mean, he's never had a seven-point lead in anything I've ever seen over Biden or anybody, anybody, anybody else. But even at 47 percent, I mean, he's touching 50 now. So with all of these naysayers saying that he can't win a general election, right? That's kind of the mantra going on with the never Trumpers and the establishment, Wall Street, the gangster, bangsters, DeSantis people behind the scenes, all saying this guy can't win, he'll bring everybody down. But your polling numbers are suggesting the exact opposite. What is your what is your response to the people saying this guy cannot win in November of 24? Well, he turned out more votes than any Republican candidate in history. And I think that's an important point. And I think another important point is that at this juncture, it looks like the candidacy is absolutely his. So, you know, once you have those two facts, I think it's just what's the road forward look like? Um, I don't see any way that DeSantis wins this un unless stuff changes. Of course, it's very early and DeSantis hasn't even declared his candidacy. But the last time we tested was very recently, and Trump beat DeSantis among Republican voters, 52 to 24 percent. And that was actually a bigger lead than he had in the fall over DeSantis. Um, so I think that I mean, that's 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 28. Mark, that's 28 points. Now, a lot of people yeah. say, oh, well, you got to go back to when Giuliani was ahead. And I guess it was what, 2012, you know, Giuliani was ahead and. And uh, that, then Fred Thompson was ahead, and it doesn't matter. Gingrich was ahead in 2012 yeah. in December. That didn't matter, right? Doesn't matter until you get to Iowa. But nobody was ahead by 28 points, okay? That's a lot. Well, I mean, 28, that's a two to one lead that you got to start breaking into. And he's also ahead in Iowa. He's ahead in New Hampshire. He's ahead in South Carolina. He's ahead in Florida. So, like, I look at DeSantis and I'm like, give me the, give me the pathway here to Milwaukee, 2,200 delegates. I mean, I don't see it. Yeah. And I Republicans do like DeSantis. They give him somewhat high yes. favorability rates ju just in there with Trump too, but we there's many different ways that we've asked the question and proved that Trump is the Republican candidate. Uh, one of the questions we asked is 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 the Republican Party the party of MAGA and Trump? And it's something like close to 80% of Republicans agree with that statement. So it's just absolutely, you know, I, I, I think it's Trump's point. 
Mark, I got a, I got a row. You can follow him at Rasmussen underscore poll at Rasmussen underscore poll. Thank you, Mark. Great analysis. We got to have you on every week. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh-huh.